Hi, this is Scott Hanselman. I want to take a moment to talk to you about some of the new features in Visual Studio 2012 and ASP.NET. Right now, specifically, the new CSS editor. It's all new, lots of great new features, and a number of really cool improvements that I think you'll appreciate. Let me just run into Visual Studio here. I'll open up a CSS file. We've got CSS snippets. So, for example, I could create a rule here for an image hover and then type in transform tab. From here I could say rotate. Notice that I'm getting IntelliSense and help for rotate. Negative 90 degrees. Enter. And I'm automatically generating cross-browser CSS, handling all of the major vendors, Mozilla, Microsoft, Opera, and WebKit. There's snippets for things like media queries, some of the more complicated things that you don't want to have to write yourself. Font face embedding for cross browser fonts. There's also a brand new color picker. I could change the color of something here. Let's say I just typed color space. I've got all of these CSS colors, but I can also hit hash. And we automatically populate a new palette rather than getting IntelliSense. I've got a color palette with all the colors that are located inside my document, as well as the primary colors. I can pull this down, and the color picker gives me all the colors that are available to me, even new in CSS3, transparency and color. If there's a specific color that I want to get, I could click on the color picker, find that picker, on my screen somewhere and pick it and then hit enter. Also new in the CSS editor is hierarchical indentation. So I could create header header h1 header h1 hover. Notice that I'm getting IntelliSense at every step of the way. And as soon as I close the curly brace I'm automatically getting indentation that illustrates the cascading rules. This gives the document more structure, improves readability, even if I'm using a rule with multiple selectors. It maintains the appropriate hierarchy, and I've got collapsing and tooltips. Sometimes developers will use CSS hacks to target specific browsers like this greater than hack. The editor knows about all of these hacks. They are well-documented and well-respected hacks. The hierarchy is maintained, as well as the collapsing. I can control all of these CSS features. I'll just come up here to the Quick Launch box and type in CSS. You notice that my menus most recently used items, including CSS validation as an option. Click on that, and I'm sent directly to Tools, Options, CSS validation, where I've got complete control of all of the CSS features, how I want things formatted, whether I want specific rules for expanded, semi-expanded, or extremely complex CSS. So even though we have a default, you can change those. Support for hex, RGB, and HSL. And under validation, I can indicate not only other versions of CSS, like I don't want to support CSS 3, for example. I'll support CSS 2.1. I'll say detect errors, unknown properties, and unknown values, and hit OK. You notice right away, now that I've switched to CSS 2.1, the CSS editor automatically knows that transform and animation fill mode are not supported in CSS 2.1. Those are actually showing up as warnings. These are just a few of the many, many improvements to the CSS editor. I would encourage you to explore, hit hyphen, check out all of the support for vendor-specific prefixes, and snippets for literally hundreds and hundreds of prefixes to make your life easier. We hope you have fun.